everybody. Welcome, welcome. My name is Bob Stewart. I've got my friend Roberto Moreno here joining me today. He's the smarter half of the uh, the presenters today. Roberto, how you doing, friend? Good. How you doing, Bob? I'm good. So Roberto's um, when when Ben popped his head into my my kind of virtual office and said, "Hey, um, let's do a webinar about Brevity Marketer, just so you know it's it's new. Let's let's introduce people to it. Tell them you know kind of explain to them why we made this thing." and then show them how to use it. Um, I said, that sounds amazing. Let me go find somebody that can do this. Uh, that's Roberto, right? Roberto led our team uh, of developers that went out and actually built this product. He's, I, don't, I mean, I don't wanna call him the product manager for this thing, although maybe that's what he is, but um, Roberto runs kind of our Canadian software development team up there in, in um, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, the, the home of, artificial intelligence right roberto uh in in canada there right. yeah so we're gonna go through i'm just gonna we're gonna talk for a minute just a couple of slides about kind of what is brevity marketer and then we're gonna actually gonna have roberto go in and he's gonna set an account up we're gonna go into a um somebody has graciously allowed us her name is jordan davis she's allowed us we're gonna go in and actually set up jordan davis's brevity marketer account so you guys are gonna watch roberto do this we'll kind of walk through um the, the setup of things, and then um, and then we'll, we'll show you some of the optimization, some of the different things you can do inside of Brevity Marketer. Now, we built this thing. Let, let's let's dive in here for a second. Let's let's talk about kind of why we built it, what it does, uh, what it is. But kind of at its you know the, the easiest and most simple explanation, Roberto, right? Is it's just it's a way to auto generate postcards around your listings, whether that listing uh, be new on the market, right? So just listed or we sold it, right? The goal every time we take one of those bad boys is to get it sold. So in either one of those scenarios, when we just list it, or once we've sold it, we can choose to engage Brevity Marketer to go out there and send a just listed or a just sold postcard on our behalf. Now, so they're instant. And here's what, here's how I kind of interpret instant would be, I don't have to go fill out a bunch of stuff. Now, during the setup process, and Roberto's going to take us through that here in a little bit, we kind of set up what we ultimately want those postcards to look like, what we want the calls to action to be. And then we, because you guys are Brevity Platform customers and we're hosting your website and we have access to your MLS data, we are just instantly going in and from your MLS, we're pulling in all of your listings, all of your sold behavior in there. And so you don't have to go in each time and add a photo you know, figure out how you want to position this particular postcard or what you want it to look like, or even enter any of the details about the property. We are grabbing all of that information real time from the MLS and allowing, and then basically bringing it in, building the postcard for you based on kind of the templates designs that you've set up. And then we're mailing it, right? Postage included. And we'll talk about the pricing here in a little bit, but postage included and, and ultimately somewhere between four and eight days from when you place that order. And, you know, the way it works is listing goes live in the MLS. We see that listing come in on the feed. We go, ah, maybe Jordan Davis wants to send a postcard on this thing. We create the postcard, whether Jordan's going to send it or not, the design gets created. And then Jordan just gets a little notification, little email notification says, hey, your, your campaign's ready to go on your new listing at 123 Main Street. And she can go in then and, and just literally in one click, Basically, she determined like, how many do I want to send? And there's a default, right? She didn't even have to determine that. She could have determined that for every time she wants to send 300. And then she just hits send. And, and that postcard gets delivered off to the printing company. Uh, they, they lick and stick a stamp on it. Roberto, do they lick every stamp or? No, I'm just kidding. I doubt they lick every stamp, right? But postage <laughs> is added and boom, that postcard's out. And then depending on, you know, where you are, what day of the week, right? If you did these things on a Sunday, that might end up delaying the thing a little bit, although I doubt many of you guys put listings live on a Sunday. But somewhere between four and eight days later, those postcards are going to land in the mailboxes of the selected homes. And we'll talk about the selected homes here in just a second. But, and then the other thing we do, and right now we send a copy of that postcard to your office, basically to the office address that you have on file inside of your business tab in your Brevity CRM. Right now, 
We are not sending a copy to the client, but I think that's something that in our next version we're looking to do where the copy also goes out to the client. But you guys will get a copy of that thing sent to you, and then somewhere four to eight days, right, that postcard is going to land in all of those selected properties. And, you know, the, the branding's really, really great. It's, it's you know, you're, you can get your logos in there and, and all your contact information. We'll talk about some of the calls to action that you can build in there. And you, you just set it up one time, and Roberto's going to do that for us. And then it's it's off and running, right? Now, let's talk for a second, Roberto, because you I brought you on to be the brains here, my friend. Let's talk about this concept of smart address targeting. You guys can kind of read what's on the screen, but essentially we are taking, we're using AI, artificial intelligence, which is even smarter than Roberto, to go out there and say, all right, if you just listed this home at 123 Main Street and you want to send 300 postcards, you could do, you know, every door direct mail with the USPS and you're basically just hitting every door within some radius of that, of that property. But we want you guys to get more for your marketing dollar. So if I was gonna send 300 postcards, does it make sense to just send to the closest 300 properties to that listing that I had? Or does it make sense for us to go out and try to figure out similar properties to your just listed or just sold, where we're, we're kind of making these you know, highly educated guesses that the person that lives in that property is going to be more likely to be receptive to your marketing message based on some key factors we know about them. So Roberto, do me a favor, because I get asked this question, I've, I've been asked it 15 times, just talking to our Ben Kinney teams about this recently. What exactly are we looking at in terms of, you know, the, the AI or the different factors to determine which houses we actually send these cards to? Yeah, great question, uh, Bob. So, you know, we kind of, the first thing we kind of do is we, we we take a variety of different data sources. So everything from sold to, you know, poster addresses to, you know, active listings. And, and what we're doing is we're, we're kind of putting some rules and implement, you know, in, in, in the AI to be able to determine which is the best home, like you mentioned, is to target. Now, there's lots of technical behind that and, and, and that could be a whole other hour. But the idea is that with a smaller budget, we're able to target better. And, and we are, might be doing things like, you know, the property just sold on the market and it's right beside the neighbor. We might not send it to that listing because may, maybe we have a smaller budget. But we're continuing to add more data sources and, and, and different um, filters and it keeps getting better and better. So those are just a couple, you know, one quick example of one thing we might be doing. Uh, we might also not send it to a condo if we're targeting homes so if there's a condo right beside it and the house that we just you know new listing that we just put on the market and it's over five hundred thousand we might not target a condo that's maybe under a hundred thousand so those are things that we we kind of uh take in take in consideration where we're building these ai systems so similar so things like you know similar bedrooms and bathrooms probably not going to send a, a notice to somebody in a two-bedroom home if we've got a five-bedroom listed or things around square footage. I mean, just, I think the simplest explanation is we're gonna try to find the best houses for your marketing dollars to, to land in their, in their mailbox, right? Yeah, and, and typically like postcard, you know, targeting, it could get really expensive because, you know, a lot of agents kind of do a lot of like thousands of postcards. So what our goal was is like, how do we give this to everybody? There's so much benefit on being able to target um, neighborhoods and farm neighborhoods. How, how, how can we do this, um, even if you have a smaller budget? And that's really where that that smart targeting comes in, in hand. Love it. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna take a stroll through the product, guys. I mean, that's not Tom Cruise. That is actually Roberto Moreno. And and I, I've I've known Roberto. We've we've traveled together. We've Roberto. We've shared a room a couple times. I'm a snorer. He'll tell you that. Um, this is the coolest I've ever seen you look. And it's probably because you have your wife on your arm and she's beautiful. And, and so you just probably. look cool. But my <laughs> goodness, man, you look cool here. Like, when, when I, I like to find a picture of you strolling so I could say, hey, all right, let's go take a stroll and have this like kitschy kind of segue. But I, I just kind of want to leave it on the screen for a minute. Let everybody soak in the cool. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate that. <laughs> that was when I was maybe 20 pounds lighter. No kids. <laughs> <laughs> carefree you can see the carefree just coming off of you all right, Nothing so, to worry about. <laughs> awesome all right so listen i'm going to take this thing now and i'm going to flip the screen 
over to Roberto. I'm going to make him the presenter. And what's going to happen is he's going to bring us, we're going to see his screen here in just a minute once he decides to start sharing that thing with us. And then we're going to go in and, and we're going to go through the, the process of setting this account up as if we are Jordan Davis. So Roberto, I, I can't see your screen yet. If on your go, oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Okay, so now I see this. Is that like some beautiful island in Canada? What is that? <laughs> That's just the default um, screensaver your computer came screen. with. Uh, where is this one? Main screen. There we go. Can you oh. see the? No, I still see your uh, your rock island. Probably the only place on Earth safe from the coronavirus. Is that why you have that on there? Probably. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> All right. Let's try this again. So we're gonna go in as Jordan Davis. She, um, you know, straight up from from hasn't ever created her account. Basically, if there's a couple, I see a couple of folks on this call that might like. I see some Ben Kinney names in here. Some of our own, you know, Ben's teams. If you guys had originally done version one, you're gonna have to kind of restart. The, this this second version that we put out is is almost a complete new build from the ground up. So it's for most of you guys, you're gonna be going through. There it is, Roberto. So now I see um, brevitymarketer.com. Perfect. Awesome. All right. So go ahead and take it away for us here and kind of guide us through what we're even looking at here. Sounds good. Well, the first thing we want to do is um, as a as an admin, we want to be able to go and sign this up, this system up with your existing Brevity account. And the way we do that is we go into the brevitymarketer.com website, we click on the sign up button, and currently there's only one, one option right now, and that is for Brevity customers. And they'll be able to, to click on the sign up now, and it's gonna take you to the screen here, and you'll be, you're gonna enter your Brevity CRM email address. If you're an administrative, it will send you an administrative link to invite you to start setting up the account. If you're a single agent, it would also send it to the administrative agent and admin for them to set it up. So for this system to work, we need the admin to be able to set up the account initially before the agents can start using it. Now that's In this case, I he's, he's, I can't even say it the way you, the admin, he says admin. So the Canadian version is admin, your admin, right? I'm just messing with you because I love Canadians. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> So, so in this case, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use Jordan Davis. I've entered our email already, and we received an email like this. And it's, please verify your email. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on this verify email address, and it's going to take you to this screen. And you can kind of see very clearly here what the email address is. And the first thing you're going to do is enter your password. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill this out. And it's going to start taking us to the wizard where we're going to be able to configure not only the team defaults, but also uh, uh, agent defaults as well. Boom. So this is a little little wizard that's going to kind of guide me through or, or make me make sure I get the, the right information filled in here. Exactly. So we pulled in this information from the personal so you can kind of see the first name is Matt and Jordan and last name is Davis. This, this information here is coming directly from the CRM. So if this is not correct or you need to modify it, that needs to be done at the CRM end and I'll show you how to sync it later. But just keep in mind that this is being pulled and we do not allow you to edit these uh, currently because we're, we're syncing from the CRM. Then we're gonna go ahead and enter your personal notification email. So right now it's set to be the business notification. And this is where some people get a little confused. The system allows it to be very flexible in, in how you manage your teams. So you might have an admin that manages all the campaigns and you don't really want the agents to go in and do anything. Or maybe you wanna give permission to your agents as they earn them to be able to have you know, this postcard system and, and be able to send it. We really have a, 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 a flexibility in however the team works. So we've kind of seen all sorts of different things. So if I were, if Jordan, our assistant if Jordan has a marketing manager on her team and she, and she wanted that marketing manager to get notified that there's a campaign waiting to send every time there's a new property listed or turns to sold, that personal notification email, she might put in there her, her marketing manager's email for that. 
That's exactly correct. Okay, cool. The next piece is the MLS piece. And this is where we're going to enter the MLS agent ID for the personal account. So this, in this case, is Matt and Jordan's or kind of a one account. But in this case, they will enter the, the agent ID. And if we see it in the Brevity CRM, we're going to try to pull that in. If we don't see it, it's obviously going to be blank. And we're going to have to go ahead and click on Add MLS, select the MLS board that you're in, and enter your agent ID. But this is okay. key for us to know which listings we're going to start creating uh, postcards with. And probably kind of so far, Roberto, the biggest kind of hiccup or, or giddy up in the hitch along the way to getting this thing set up is a lot of agents don't know what that ID is. Or sometimes like you, you think of it as your lag number and it's what you go to log in with. But when the MLS sends us the data, they have some different number for you. Um, you know, if you have a problem with this, basically if you go through the whole thing, you think you've got the right MLS number in there. And when you get all done, it, we don't pull any properties in reach out to our support team and our support team can help you guys identify based on knowing one of your current listings, we can help you identify what the correct MLS agent ID is. Correct. The second section here is the business. So once again, we're pulling this information from Brevity. Uh, we do our best to pull logos, uh, but not all logos are perfect for print. So we recommend to change these and upload basically the ones that you have for high resolution print. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and select the team logo. I already have it kind of ready. And just give it a second here, it's gonna load. So there okay, it so is, again, and I'm actually- Guys, this is really important, right? Because what a lot of times what, lo what loaded in there by default was some logo that was sitting in the CRM, which was probably somewhere around like 12 kilobytes big or something, I mean, really small files. So you, you, I mean, this is a really important part. You're going to want to come in because here's the reality on the screens that you're looking and seeing that, that low resolution logo on, it's going to look fine. But when you, when it goes to print that first time that you do it right with a low resolution logo, when that postcard ends up, you know, at your office, cause we send one to you, you're going to think, ah, dang it. I should have had a better photo. So just get a high resolution logo in there from the start. Exactly. We could also go ahead and change the headshot if we want to. This looks like a decent picture and we're just going to leave it just for now, but we, we can definitely update that as, as well. As you can kind of see, we're configuring the profile for the business, which in this case is a team, as well as the admin personal. Once we click save and it takes us to the next section here, it's going to ask me here for business notification email. And in this case, I'm actually going to use the, the, I'm actually going to use move at yourdavisteam.com. And this email is for all the email notifications for the system, especially if you're controlling who has access down the line. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter that email address there. All right. So now this is the fun part. So here's where we're going to customize the team defaults, so everything from the postcards, how many postcards they're allowed to send, min, max default, to, to the default headlines, to quickly codes, to colors, and templates. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and select one of these templates that I like. I'm going to go ahead and select the brand color, which is red. And I'm going to go new listing, because in this specific tab, we're configuring the new listing default for the team. In case of using a URL, we're going to use a quickly code. And you can kind of see if you select to disable, you can kind of allows me here to enter the quickly code. And we're going to, you know, do you have a uh, code there for yeah. Team Davis? Yeah. So on, on the listing, so this is like, let's, let's talk about this for just a second, because when it's a new listing, what we would want to use as a quickly code would be that, that same code that you put out on, on your sign, right? So Davis team is their particular quickly code that they use when they get a new listing and that sign goes out the that their code is Davis team so that's what we're going to use right there so the the call to action is going to end up saying you know to get details about this home text Davis team to 59559 for details perfect um, here in the number of postcard sent per listings this is where we can set the default for the campaign as well as the min and max for the team so this means that whatever the agent 
whenever if, if the agent has access to the system, they would only be able to send within these parameters. Now, so we're going to do the same thing. Go ahead. Cu cu couple, well, so 100, I've had this question a few, 100 is the drop dead minimum. Like you can't yes. send 20 postcards to the 20 nearest neighbors, right? 100 is the drop dead minimum. Yeah, is 2,000 the actual maximum? Like we, we just don't allow them to send any wider than that, Roberto? Uh, currently, yes. But we can, if, 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 the, if the customer want to send more, we can definitely send more. Okay. We're going to do the same thing in the sold. So this one, maybe I want to use a different layout. And we're going to use another quickly code. And this is going this to one is, be... Uh, so, so they use uh, your Davis team. YDT value, YDT value. So in this case, you guys, it's a just sold. Um, what we're gonna try to do is get them to, to go in there and, and see what their own house is worth, right? By texting YTT, YDT value to 59559. That, that's an instant keyword on Quickly. She's got, gonna have that set up to fire back a link to her home valuation site so that one of the neighbors could say, oh, that's house sold. I wonder what my house is worth and go in and text YDT value to 59559. The flip we side is, is we, we've got a URL we could use, right? Is there anything that That's I need correct. to know about? Like if I was to say, okay, disable the quickly because we're only gonna put one call to action. Either it's gonna be a website they can go to or it's gonna be a quickly call to action. Roberto, is there anything that I need to know about that kind of call to action URL? Yeah, so if you're using the action URL, you know, in this case, we're going to send them to the home evaluation page. We're actually, we're going to convert this URL into a shorter URL so that it actually fits in the postcard. What that allows us to do is allows us to track us, track that specific URL to that specific address. So things down the line, we'll be able to, you know, if somebody typed in that, that code and it came to my house, it, on the website, it's going to be able to pull my home evaluation right there and then because we know it was that customer. As well as this is also going to feed back into the CRM as a address lead only. One of the cool things that I like about working with Roberto and his team of crack Canadian developers up there, just they're they move really fast and like the cool features that that are just around the horizon, just over the horizon, are literally just over the horizon. Like they're 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 moving this thing along really really well. So um, kudos to your dev team. But things like showing you guys. It's not there today, right? Like that that unique URL, but that the next phase of this will will literally show you like which house clicked on that URL or then it clicked, which house entered that URL to go look at that listing on their phone or their on their computer. Because on our teams, we, we might not know their phone number and their and their email address yet, but we're gonna run over to Ben Verified, we're gonna look up that address, and we're gonna find out every single stinking thing we can about that potential homeowner, right? Exactly. So once we've kind of done all that, it's going to show us a quick preview of what the postcard looks like for the default. I didn't do a lot of customizations here, but here, you would, if you had it selected different colors or different call to actions, you can kind of see this one here has Davis Teams, and this one is just sold. If we're happy with how it looks for the default, we can just click continue. And now it's going to take us to a very similar screen but this is the personal customization. So this is more for Jordan herself if she wanted to customize it differently to her. So we could either select use default or I can select this off and then customize it specifically to her. So this Same is thing when an agent stone. comes in, when an agent comes in, Roberto, they are not going to have those customized team options. They're simply going to be customizing their own their own look and feel if they want to, or they can just use the defaults that the team set up. Exactly. And you can kind of see here, if I select this, you can kind of see that we've already limited. Like it's not going to let them select more as default. Got it. So those, so those uh, number of postcards to send, we keep that in the control of the admin always. Exactly. Now, I'm just going to leave it as team default just to kind of move it forward here. We're going to go to the next screen here. I'm going to submit. Now here, what we're going to do is we're going to feed all the agents from the CRM and we're going to allow them to, we're going to allow the, the admin to be able to send invites to them as part of the system. Now we could say, you know what, we don't want to send, you know, I want to have full control of it. I don't want my agents to do it because I manage everything for them. 
we don't have to invite them right now. We can invite them later. But if, if you do want to give your team access, then you can definitely start clicking these off and, and, and inviting them to the system. And what this is going to do, it's going to create that email like you did initially, but they're not going to be able to see the team defaults and admin control. They're just going to be able to see their customized their customized screen, which allows them to customize what we let them, and, and that's basically it, and add their agent ID. So in this case, uh, you can kind of see here that email has been verified for this, as well as admin, and this one's pending. So we can kind of see the status of where the agents are, and we can add, if, if we have added more systems in the CRM, we can sync it, and then we can bring those agents into the system. So I'm gonna skip this for now, and I'll show you where, where we can do that as well. On the, on the screen. So now this is going to take a little bit of time. What this is doing here is we're pulling those agent IDs and we're starting to feed in listings. So you can kind of see in the top left hand corner here, there's a little green bar. You know, we're, we're doing a bunch of work behind the scenes to start bringing those listings in. And this could take just about a minute to two minutes and you'll start seeing some listings pop up here. So we can either wait for it to finish, or we can start playing with the campaigns, which is what I'm going to start doing here. You can kind of see that this is a sold listing. We the default is 300 recipients. How much is going to cost? And it's waiting approval. At this time, there would have been an email that would have been sent to this specific agent saying, "Hey, we have a new campaign," or it would be sent to the admin based on however we configure the teams or however your team runs. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this specific campaign here. Oh, still not getting here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on review and send. And this is going to give us a high level view of what the postcard looks like, make sure it all looks good, make sure we have the, the, the Davis team logo proper, you know, make sure the quickly code is there, that's important. And then it's gonna show us a map of where we're focused on based on that algorithm that we talked about. This is something that we're going to allow you to, you know, be able to select down the line a little bit. You know, we're going to be launching a, a, an advanced feature for you to be able to filter and, and have a little bit more control of this. Once again, we feel like, you know, the AI algorithm is based on the budget. We're going to be able to decide the best proper properties to target. Now, let's say we wanted to edit this campaign. We could click on edit and we have full control over the campaign. If we're happy with what it, what it looks like, we just go ahead and approve and send. And I'm actually going to go ahead and do that because I like this one really quickly. And now what we're going to see is we're going to see the status as being processing. What this means is it's being sent to the printers, you know, been, you know, figuring out what addresses we're going to pick. And we have 24 hours before this is locked and we can no longer make any changes. So we do have 24 hours to go back and say, oh, I made a mistake, change it, fix it. Uh, if not, once the 24 hours is happening, it's gone to the printers, there's not much we can do, and, 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 and that's basically it. But that's why it's important to verify to make sure your call to actions are correct, your, your text is correct, all that, all that kind of information. I'm gonna go back, back into the dashboard. We'll see that it's loading all these properties. Currently, we're loading 60 day prior. So anything within 60 day from that agent ID, we're going to uh, load in this dashboard. You can kind of still see that we're, we're loading and creating. Anything after today, it's gonna be real time. So we'll just send you an email saying, hey, you just sold the property, congratulations. We've created the campaign. You can go ahead and review. I'm gonna quickly show you the edit. Uh, if, I, if I wanna edit the campaign individually, we can go ahead and do that. So I can click on edit and in here I can, as an admin, I can select, maybe this property is John's, but I've always wanted to show up as Mandy's. So we can select a different agent for that specific property for that, for that, for that specific campaign. So that's, and then that's we a have big more. deal. That's a, well, real quick. That's a big deal from a lot of you guys probably uh, on your team, like in Jordan's case, maybe Matt and Jordan are kind of the primary agent on a lot of these listings. So We've got it connected to their MLS ID and it pulls in, but it could very well be that Mary's the actual kind of agent who, who's, you know, that she's the co-listing agent in the MLS. And so 
we could we could decide look in the MLS, this is Matt and Jordan's because everything's Matt and Jordan's about the way the team's set up. But this is actually Mary's listing, and let's let's market Mary on this particular postcard, and we would just change that display agent for who we want to show up alongside that list postcard. And once again, this is only for the Min, and Min has access to to this specific field to be able to change the agent. So in this case, yep. let's say I do want to change it to to Jordan Davis for the name. And once I click save, it's going to regenerate that campaign. It's going to update the listing if there's something updated about the listing. And it's just going to regenerate that campaign. Keep in mind that if the listing changes, any information about the listing changes, if you update a logo or text or any of your defaults, it's going to regenerate the campaign when you click on it, as well as any information that changed from that, from the data, specifically for listed just listed properties if you change the price it's going to regenerate that campaign and it's going to update that campaign real time you can kind of Here's see that one I, thing that we, i've come across real quick roberto you see that little revert and unlock button here's what happens guys and this, this is important to understand if you go into a particular campaign and you change you change something right a, a call to action or something in a particular campaign and then you save it that campaign now is locked in place and any any other changes you made like to the template are not going to affect that campaign that's been locked in place so we've had people go in on a campaign change something in the campaign itself which now locks that thing in and then go out and say oh you know what i want to change my logo universally and go change their logo universally what will happen is it'll change it on all of the other campaigns that have never been edited but this one that had been edited it won't change that logo from the master template on that campaign and that had been edited. So they would have had to go back and say revert and unlock. That would then allow that campaign to pull in that master template logo change we'd made. And then we could go make that subsequent change to something specific in the wording or whatever. So that's, you guys might run across that. We've had a few people run across that. I just want to kind of call that out for everybody. Yeah, so that, that's really important, yes. Now, you can kind of see here on the top left hand corner as an admin i can have access to all the agents profiles so i can kind of see you know i can click on amanda here and i can go to customize and this will customize amanda so if amanda doesn't have her logo and you're kind of doing it for her you can go in here and, and kind of customize amanda's profile as an admin you can kind of see all these other agents here as well now if amanda has access she most likely is going to configure her own team defaults and 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 call to actions if, if you if she has a privilege to do that in, in the team but based on how you run your team once again you can kind of see here on the profile we pull all the information from from the crm you, you can kind of see here we don't have a headshot so you know we most likely recommend uploading the headshot there uh, we do have uh you know the dre number for specific areas um there's currently two areas right now um if you have a dre it changes the templates to include the DRE numbers. So if you do have a DRE number here and you look, go to the campaign and you look at the templates and it doesn't have it, just let us know and we'll add that board to include that, that template that supports the DRE number. Here you can kind of see that we're, it's pulling MLS information. So we, we, we figured out her agent ID and it's doing the same process as we were doing for Jordan. Let me jump back in here. So as you're jumping back in there, I want to Aaron, Aaron real quick. Aaron asked a question about he's asking about like a particular. He's saying, "Man, I, I, it'd, it'd be cool if I had a quickly keyword on both sides, and I could have one side be one thing and one side be a different call to action." Aaron, that's a great idea. Do me a favor, send that to feedback at brevity com, and Josiah will get his hands on that, and then Josiah will go in and figure out how we do that. I can see that. Look, right now there's kind of three kind of options for the layout. That it won't be the last, those won't be the last three you ever see, right? We'll start to build more options in, in terms of, you know, you just kind of picking a default layout for those things. And I could see subsequent designs having things like what Aaron just subscribed, uh, described. I did, he knows. Cool. Awesome, Aaron. Thank you. I appreciate you doing that. I just, just a quick comment on that, Bob. That is coming on the next version, so for about two, three weeks, the ability to, customize the front and the back have a quick decode on the back and the url on the front so we're we're this whole interface of editing the campaign is changing to allow that flexibility even further 
That's why so I he's already on the, on the awesome. on the change That's fantastic. Uh, just a quick as a couple quick more things here under settings. You can kind of see those those settings that we had on the on the flow on the initial flow. You can kind of go in here and invite team members. You know, send the invite. We do have this big Brevity CRM sync. This only syncs that information that is locked, so the name, the email that is on the CRM. So if you add an agent or you update information on the CRM end and you need to reflect on Brevity Marketer, we just click on that sync button and that will change these fields here. All right, so now the next step is once we have it all done, this system will continue to email you when campaigns are ready, when new listings and new solds. We're going to be adding a couple more different types of campaigns in the future. But really, that's basically it. Once we've done all that initial setup, it is a little bit, you know, it takes a little bit of time getting the setup. There's not much to do after that. We have a couple yeah. questions, Bob. Maybe we can go through some of those. Who's got a question? There's a couple hundred of you guys here, and right now, Aaron's the only one. There we go. Okay. Um, so he says, side question, do we send bug fixes or new changes to the Brevity CRM to feedback? Yeah, Blake, I, no, bugs I would send to support at Brevity so we can take care of those fast. But if you have like an idea, something you'd love to see us build, um, just commentary on something, yeah, feedback at Brevity is a great place for that, Blake. Um, uh, the, Rachel's like, um, Rachel, you're my, you're my doppelganger spirit animal. I don't know. Rachel says, God, this is like my question. I've been asking Roberto this. Can you upload a list of mailing addresses that we have? Not today, but that's definitely something we're looking at. Like for me, here's what I want to be able to do. I want to be able to go into the CRM, pull up a list of my past clients, and then fire a, a postcard out to my past clients, you know. So Roberto, talk a little bit about kind of that idea. Yeah, so that, that's exactly one example of how we could, we could we're looking at integrating closer to the CRM as well as auto plans. Maybe there's an auto plan that, you know, sends the a birthday card or maybe, you know, we, you know, when you have a new listing, it does, a, it's part of your auto plan, you know, to do something else with that listing. Um, so we're trying to integrate closer to auto plans to allow more of that automation um, to be more personalized for that, for the customer or group of sphere that you want to target. So maybe yeah. an open house. You know, in, in Ben's business, so, uh, you know, a lot of what we do around Brevity is kind of based on how Ben Kinney does business, and mail is an important part of our business. Like, we try to to touch everybody in our database, you know, in their, at their mailbox once a month, well, everybody in our sphere and our, our past clients and that sort of thing. So, being able to take advantage of the, the lists, the data that you have already, you know, in your database is definitely something that we want to be able to open that up for you guys to, to hit that stuff with, with mail. Um, Amanda, DRE code is Department of Real Estate. So like in California, there's other states like this. I just know California specifically. If you do any kind of marketing, you have to have your DRE, Department of Real Estate, number on that marketing. So if, if that's a requirement in your state, put your DRE code in there, your Department of Real Estate license number, whatever. If it's not, Amanda, don't worry about that. You can leave that part blank. Um, is there is there going to be a 30 days after closed postcard? Something like we still have people calling about this house. Are you interested in selling yours? Kaylee, I think that's a really great idea. Feedback at brevity.com. I think, you know, listen, we want you guys to be able to have all these things in there eventually, right? And, you know, in a, in a perfect pie in the sky world, you'd be able to go in there and, and brevity designer and brevity marketer would play friendly with each other and you'd be able to design your own stuff, go into your CRM, pull up the list of people you want to mail it to, jump into Marketer and kick that mail out to somebody on that design that you did in Brevity Designer. So yeah, there's going to be stuff like that. That's a really good one though. Kaylee, I might um, shoot that over to Josiah, feedback at Brevity. I love that one. Um, so who is this? Somebody says- I, I think the biggest thing is, is we want to save you time. And, and, and that's how we kind of approached it initially. It's like, how can we save people time right away and, and start being able to utilize this, this type of, you know, print, you know, neighborhood flyering, kind of news listing solds, you know, quickly and easy without all the complexity around, you know, sending very specific postcards. So that was the first goal. But now, now that we have this, the, 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 the postcard, the new just listing just sold, you know, all this feedback about, you know, what other things we could do, 
definitely send it to the feedback email as we'll take those uh, and, and if we have the data and we can automate it we're, we're going to do that crystal says i'm an admin is it best for me to create an account and then create the marketing for my team through her account i would say yes crystal like if you handle the marketing stuff inside of your team yeah create it right get, get all the agent kind of profiles set up and make sure everybody's photos there and all that stuff but you can do all of that from your admin account and then really what you'd want to make sure is that business notification email then is your email crystal because when something happens you know when a new when a team member takes a new listing or there's a new property in there ready for a campaign you're going to be the one that gets notified of that and yeah you'll be able to go in there and kind of end to end manage that process for any of the agents on your team absolutely um, is there a way you can put QR codes on the postcards for your websites? Um, I don't know. It's definitely something we could we could consider in the future, Cameron. Feedback at Riverview.com. Um, do we have our own Quickly codes? So, Kevin, um, if you're a Brivity platform client, you have you should um, you definitely have the 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 buyer side code, right? Where somebody can text the property to get or text the code to get information about a specific listing. That's your quickly main quickly keyword. That other code that I use for Jordan, that hers was, you know, YDT value. We call that an instant keyword. Each one of you guys get three instant keywords as part of the Brivity platform, but you have to go through our support team to get those codes set up. So I don't know specifically if you have one, Kevin, but you guys all have access to be able to get them set up and you can reach out to our support team and they can help you get, they can help you identify what your main one is that's the buyer side. But then on the seller side, if you want to do one of those valuation codes, they can help you figure out one of those as well. Um, Lisa says, do we need to use high resolution headshots too? Roberto, what do you think about that? Because we're printing the postcards, it's better to have the best possible image. So, you know, high resolution could mean a lot of different things. I, I would just say try printing it you know, a postcard, if it looks good, it should be okay. But definitely high rec high resolution pictures is recommended for, for the logos and the, and the agent pictures. Kathleen says two questions. Uh, and I know Kathleen and I know what kind of business that she's the, you know, kind of holding together. So these questions make a heck of a lot of sense. They have a really big business. They, they sell a lot of houses. They list a lot of houses. Her question is, can we filter by sold and listed? And I think the answer today, Roberto, is not not right now. Right, but not right see. now, but we will be allowing you to filter and search for different things in this dashboard. So, this dashboard is going to allow you to filter, you know, by sold, you know, new listings. It's going to be able to filter by what's been sent. So, that search is something that address or MLS number, maybe stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. So, that that is what we're it is part of our next uh iteration of, of uh, development on this on the, on the dashboard. Wes says, do we have plans to update how it pulls rural areas that may not have the minimum comparable houses available? Um, it's, so here's what I would say to that, Wes. Um, it's, th there's some element of like machine learning in this where like over time it gets better. Like the, the, the flip of that, so uh, yes, right? We're, we're always trying to make it better. But look, I think at the end of the day, it could just be look. In some areas, maybe it doesn't work as well as it works in others, right? I have a big rural area, and, and and we're like, geez, there's not a hundred comparables anywhere around here. Maybe we start to do like kind of regression algorithms that say, look, I went out a hundred, and we didn't get enough matches based on kind of the algorithm we normally use. Now let's dial that algorithm back, and and again, the house has become not quite as relevant in order to get them, you know, just on the list in a big rural area, West. So. I think over time we get better at that, but part of that's just a function of machine learning, which you know we let computers kind of get better, right? They learn as things happen. But there's other things like, Roberto, like we when we send a postcard and it comes back undeliverable, what happens in that scenario? Yeah, that's a great question. So right now, because we're sending these postcards first class, if there's something that's undeliverable and it comes back, we automatically know that that postcard did not deliver, we actually credit you that postcard for your next campaign. So we, we, we're eating up that cost and we'll credit you for the next campaign and we tr keep track of these addresses. We try the best, but certain databases sometimes don't have the right address or maybe they're not there or maybe it's a rural property and there's no mailbox. 
we, we would credit that back to your next campaign if it was not delivered. And then we take that property and we go, okay, next time, you know, Kathleen sends a, a postcard, we're not going to send it to that property. It kind of comes off the board and then we, we, we do some extra verification. It could be that, you know, two years from now, okay, that one's back in the list and we're sending to it again. And um, so there's, there's lots of stuff kind of happening under the, under the surface there to make sure that, that these cards end up in the best possible hands, right? right. Ron, well, you, um, you're, this yeah, question about- on the, best, on the West question there, one way that we're kind of handling this is you'll be able to, like if you click on a campaign and you click, click on the map and it's like, oh, it didn't, like some of the listings are kind of not close by because it's a rural property. In the future release, we'll be able to, you'll be able to kind of circle the areas you want to target as a, just as a quick kind of, you know, option for you so that you can kind of be like, okay, I want to target these, these homes here and you can have a little bit more flexibility on that. But I would say definitely send that to feedback and then we can kind of look at your area and see, okay, how do we solve this specific area? Because every, every area is different. Ryan, Ryan asked a really good, like, what about address only leads? Can we use this to start mailing them? using no ryan not today like today the minimum is 100 i but i could envision a time a year from now where it's like all right i got an address only lead i just want to send one postcard to that lead it, you know it probably costs you more right it's, it's not 59 cents anymore it's probably 89 cents or a dollar 19 or something but you know because it's it's one print job it's um it's one postage going out but yeah i mean i could see something like that today ryan it's not set up like that right now we're you know we're not taking data from you to, to send these things out. We're using, you know, kind of these, these data sets that we have to identify properties around a certain area. But you guys have some really good questions. Uh, we'll keep going here as long as you guys are sitting here listening for the answers. Um, so are we ever going to be able to design custom postcards or maybe upload an image file? What do you think about that, Roberto? Does that like, is that something yeah, you've thought about one yet? Thing, that one thing that we are looking at potentially doing it with Brevity Designer. So if you design something on Brevity Designer, we might be able to feed that that custom image into the into the Brevity Marketer postcard. So it is something that we're we're looking at it. I don't have an ETA on that, but it is something that we're looking at as soon as we start integrating different products together. Here's one of the one of the things, Andrew, about like I get it, right? The design the custom postcard, you're like, I, I want I got a postcard that's been working well for a long time. When you open that up to a really wide audience, like we always have to play the like, I don't want to word this properly. We, we kind of got to, you build software to like the the worst user of the software, right? And so um, it, it's, which is kind of stinks, but it, and, 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 but when you open it up for custom design, let's say we said, okay, you can just upload a file image and I can we just, we'll kick a postcard. All of a sudden you get like, oh crap, uh, you know that postcard sent out and the, and the edges were all cut off and we're like well you add you added a aspect ratio that was like six to four and it's supposed to be four to three and that's why it cut like so we had to resize it and it stretched it but there's not a human looking at every one of these things so so sometimes like kind of limiting the options is done in the best interest of making sure that ultimately what lands in the the mailbox of the customer is something of high quality so you know, make that you know, and again, we'll 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 do our best to extend the functionality and the features as this thing moves along over the coming months. Um, but you know, sometimes you kind of got to go. Well, um, maybe not. Um, any coming soon templates, Kevin? I we've kind of stayed away from that just because of all of the NAR, the new guidelines around coming soon, and like if you think about like some of that guidance that NARS put out and, and kind of some of the legal decisions that have been put, put, like when you, when it's four to six days that that thing, and, and based on how long you guys are actually allowed to hold those things and market them publicly, like, I don't know that you're going to see any coming soon functionality in there. Um, anytime soon anyway. Um, now, so it, it could, if, if it is on the MLS, you could change the call to action to come soon. If it's depending on you know if, if you can do that, but the because there's a four to six day delay by the time you enter it might be already on the market. I, like I said, I'm just kind of thinking, you know that that might be some some you know questions we got to ask and, and see if it's if it's allowed or not. And kind of re, restating, we talked about this in the very beginning, and but you know well, it's worth restating. So this is the list around where the listing or the sale is it just set up to to send to people more likely to move? 
yeah. I mean, that that's the idea is like, like we wouldn't send it to somebody that just just purchased their house six months ago. And like, they're not gonna get that marketing uh, from us because we, you know, we make some assumptions that they're probably going to be there for a little bit, right? So there's a bunch of factors inside of this algorithm that, I mean, yeah, that's literally the goal is designed to get, let's say you pick 300 postcards. We don't want it to just be the nearest 300 houses. We want it to be the 300 kind of best fits, right? And we'll go out a little way, a little bit further from the property in order to do that because there's somebody next door to that house that just bought six months ago. And, and it's not the right time right now is not the right time for you to spend that 59 cents try to market to that customer who just bought six months ago. So absolutely. What is the typical yeah, time from ordering to hitting mailboxes? Heather, it's between four and eight days, depending on what day of the week you order and then kind of, you know, mail delivery service in your area, but somewhere between four and eight days, I think in the big, big, big major metros, right? Closer to four, you get a little bit further out there or you order on a Saturday night, right? Or something like that. Like you're going to, you're going to skew closer towards the eight side. Roberto? It's four to six business days. See, Roberto's. I, I, I'm even given a little bit at four to eight, four to six. It's somewhere in that in that range, right? Um, yeah. How many brevity codes can we have, Andrew? You can have your main one, and then three additional quickly keywords. Um, yep, yep. Oh, maybe I answered that. Man, you guys are firing questions. Will, will you have different sizes, um, Amanda? Yes. In the future, I can see us having different sizes. You know, a little bit like the bigger postcards. You know, cost a little bit more, but yeah, there will be options like that. Um, so Jessica, if you don't, like, so Jessica, and then look, she, she might not be the only one, right? When you get in there and you think you've got the right MLS number, Jessica, your, your agent ID, but nothing's loading for you, reach out to our support team. So support at brevity.com, or you can go into the CRM, the Brevity CRM, and in the bottom right, there should be a chat functionality and, and chat with us, but we can help you find that proper MLS number. My guess is the MLS number you entered, maybe it's not the same one that your IDX feed feeds us to identify who you are specifically inside of that feed. So um, check out, check that out. Is there a way to farm a certain area? Um, so Cameron, not yet, man, but that, that stuff's coming, right? Like Roberto mentioned a minute ago, the ability to draw a circle around a certain area that I want to fire a card to, which then will require kind of other postcard options, not just listed and just sold, you know, not exclusively just listed and just sold. So these are all things that, you know, over the next couple of months, you guys will start to see. Um, this is a Carly says, can you tell me what the response has been for previous campaigns? Have they been well received by the recipients? There was a, I tried to find this. I was going to put it, somebody posted, I can't, I want to say it was Jessica Hubbard, but that, that's literally from memory. And I tried to find it. I couldn't find it in Brevity Mass. She posted like her first campaign, like they got a listing from it and like two potential buyers or something. But look, that is not normal, right? And I think I even left that comment. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Totally abnormal though. I don't want anybody to think like, I'm gonna spend $59 to get two li or a listing and two buyers. Like postcard marketing is, is a long game, right? It's an infinite game. Like, you know, the number one agent in the United States four or five years ago was a guy named Mark Spain, who was a former Keller Williams agent out of Atlanta. He built his entire business on postcard marketing. Like, you know, and he was the number one agent in the country back when 1200 lists, you know, 1200 transactions was number one. They did 1200 transactions and the vast majority of their business came from postcards. But and I did a panel with this guy one time in front of a thousand agents. And one of the things he said is, look, I built the biggest business in the United States on postcard marketing, but it is a long game. So, you know, we've seen some early kind of, but I wouldn't call those normal, right? There's been some early results, but don't think that like, I'm going to send my 59 cents and then or my $59, send a hundred and then sit back and go, all right, when are those listings going to start rolling? I mean, this is a consistency thing that says, you know, cause look, most of those people, they end up in their, they're, they're not ready to buy or sell today. Right. But if they see over the next six months, every time we sell a listing in that mar in that neighborhood, it ends up on them because they're going to continue to get pulled into those data sets because, you know, if you sold a property here and then you sold one the next block over, that same, those same people are generally going to, you know, assuming the properties are similar, right? Those same people are going to be getting hit with that marketing message. So it's a good way to really reinforce to an area you're already working to get those neighbors to realize who's the one doing business in that neighborhood. Um, Roberta, do we have a way to deal with people that are, that have multiple MLSs? So, yeah, so we, 
So yeah, there's kind of two parts to that. If you have multiple MLSs, you can just go to your MLS and add uh, a different MLS here. So you could go here, you could select the different MLS board, and once again, your agent ID for that board. I think that specific question was uh, around the design. So it, currently, the only way that you would have to, we could pull the listings, but you would have to go in and edit that campaign if it's not the default um, bro uh, brokerage information. So you would have to go in and, and manually edit and change that from the default. But we'll, I'll bring that up to the guys to see what they think about letting you have multiple brokerages. I, I think it's a complex uh, request, but currently the way to do it a workaround is you just edit that specific campaign. Uh, we will pull that listing from that board so you can have as many boards and as many as MLS numbers as, as you wish. Luann, I know Luann too, and I know she's another team that, that does a fair amount of business. And so the, Luann, I know the answer to this one and it, it will be in the next version that we put out. She said, is there a way for me to like archive or get rid of um, campaigns that I, I'm not going to send one for that, right? And the answer right now is no, Luann, but that is that is definitely in our next version that you'll see roll out here, what, Roberto, in the next like two weeks-ish, something like yeah, that, we're not, right? Yeah, we're not pulling commercial right now, just because some of the data is, is not as great. But but if they have like a, like a, just a dog, right? That listing where you're like, man, I can't believe we even took this listing. It's never going to sell at that price. I don't want to send a campaign on this, but I don't want it to sit on that dashboard just over and over and I have to stare at it every day. You will be able to either kind of archive or, or get rid of those in some way here really soon, Luann. That's right, that'll, allow, that'll be the filtering in the dashboard, yeah. All right, listen, th there's a thousand other questions in here. Um, I apologize, guys. I I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cut this out. I don't even know where, like, here's the deal. Um, our support team's pretty well versed on this. You guys can go into Brevity Mastermind and ask some of these questions if you want. Roberto and I will try to keep our eyes inside of Mastermind throughout the rest of the day. Our support team, they, they, they know a ton about this stuff. You know, the one thing that I would say, like, with support, you might kind of go to mastermind for things that are like, man, would be cool if, if it could do this, right? Those kind of feature request type things or feedback at Brivity. If you're not somebody that wants to kind of, you know, get a, a swell of support behind you by posting to masterminds, if you're fine just saying, hey, Josiah, I think it'd be cool if it did this. Feedback at Brivity.com is one way you can get us. Our Brivity mastermind group is another way. If it's, if it's hey, how does it, how does that work? Or God, my, my listings aren't pulling in. I don't see all my properties or something like that support at brevity.com you guys roberto i know you moved a bunch of things around today to, to be with me and do this here thanks man i appreciate it i wouldn't have been able to do this without you i would have been just like i don't know i probably would have made a bunch of stuff up if truth be told but um thanks buddy i appreciate it thank you and i and uh i'm, I'm super happy that the customer gets to be part of, of, of building this product and, and that's what we've we're, we're set to our goals to do Sweet. Okay. Well, I gotta we gotta let Roberto go so he can get back there to, to driving the ship and getting these guys building all the cool stuff that, that we know is coming. So Roberto, have an awesome rest of your week up there in Edmonton, Canada, my friend. The rest of you guys out there, wash your hands. My name is Bob Stewart. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye, everybody.